Okay. So I think we're ready. We're ready? We're ready. Okay. Yep. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, we're Cynthia gets a big hug today <laughs> because we've had a, you know, a, a big, a big month, a big week. Mm -hmm. And you've done so much work. Oh, we both have. Yeah. We both have. Yeah. Yeah. But let's start with an introduction. Okay. Yeah. So this is Barb. Hi. I'm Cynthia. We're sisters and we own a yarn shop in Edmonton, Alberta called River City Yarns. Yeah. 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 And for those of you who've been following us and have been watching our episodes, you'll know that this is a family owned business. Mm -hmm. Our daughters both work with us here in the store and we we feature our podcast features, you know, mm -hmm. news about what's happening in the store, new yarns, new projects, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. But this month we're going to start off with um, some news which mm -hmm. is a little bit sad, and yeah. um, and we'll make our podcast. Our podcast is going to be a little bit shorter today for that reason. Mm -hmm. So, um, how do you want it? <laughs> two weeks ago, it? two weeks ago, our mom passed away. Mm -hmm. She'd been, um, she'd been. Has it been two weeks already? Yeah, yeah. It oh happened really fast. She passed away, and then last weekend we had her funeral. And now we're filming our podcast, and mm -hmm. yeah, so it's it's. I know it's been a world. week since we had her funeral. Yeah, um, and it was a week before her funeral that she died. But you know, Cynthia, the whole week has just been a blur. It has, and yes. even yeah. since then, I still can't, you know, focus on anything. Yeah, yeah, it's been. And I think that's so. You know, that's because we all deal with this kind of. We, we all deal with death in a different way. Mm -hmm. and, it, yeah. and, you know, in, in the run-up to, you know, someone passing away, you, you know, you... So, for example, I feel like I had uh, lots of opportunities to say goodbye to mom. Right. Yeah. Cynthia spent a lot of time at the hospital. Only because my sister managed the store. So, you know, it's it, when you're dealing with someone who is ill and who is in the hospital, you really... I'm really grateful for the support of family mm -hmm. because... And I was grateful <clears throat> too, so that, you know, so that Cynthia could be there night and day, which is kind of pretty much what happened because our mom, you know, needed um, kind of round-the-clock care. She needed company, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It was nice because I have this phobia too about hospitals, and so I tried to go as much as I can, mm -hmm. um, but I kind of helped out here at the yeah, store so yeah. handling everything that Cynthia would so she would be able to spend lots of time there yeah yeah so it's, I mean it, it is it's a it's a you need a family yeah to deal with crises and so um the other thing that's come out of this event in our lives is the realization about how big our family is because if you include all of our friends and customers and community members and suppliers um, yes we've been almost overwhelmed um with comments and um, condolences from folks mm. and we so appreciate that yeah um we probably won't get a chance to reply to everyone who's who's posted their comments on mm. our social media pages but um we do deeply deeply appreciate all those words of comfort and so that's been that's been really nice. Yes, yeah. that's that's been yeah. really. Um, it felt so good. Yeah, people said such great things too. Yeah, about our mom and maybe people who never even knew our mom. But we posted a picture of her, and you could tell from her picture what a happy lady she yeah. was. <laughs> yes, yes. She was always you know laughing or mm -hmm. joking around or, and well, and she had the best laugh ever. She did. Yes. <laughs> you you wrote Cynthia gave the eulogy at the funeral and she wrote such an amazing story about mom kind of some life lessons that our mom mm -hmm. imparted on us and you put that up on the blog page right yeah so if anyone wants to read that and see some pictures of Barb and myself and mm -hmm. our mom and our other family um, you can go to rivercityyarns.com and just click on the blog page mm -hmm. and we would um, love it if you left a story about your own um, life events mm -hmm. and they don't have to be sad ones they can be happy no. ones um, memories the the sort of the idea that we had was that you know these kinds of events inspire us in different ways and so that's what we wanted to talk about mm -hmm. today on the podcast was um, some of the things that we do to cope with trauma um, and some of the things that we do to memorialize 
um, a person that we've lost mm -hmm. and how we do that through our craft and through yeah. our knitting. So let's go there. Okay, So sure. while this was going on, we were attempting to finish the four-day sweater cowl. Right. And uh, Marie the, Greens. Yeah. And so days. we started this cowl um, at the beginning of, so at the end of, at sort of the end of July. I think it was July, oh, it was the beginning of July. It, was, it started on July 4th, Independence see, Day in the U.S. My mind's totally gone. <laughs> yeah, That's right. It was supposed to be done by, I think, the 26th, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. We had the finishing party. Right. And so um, while, that, while, that, while the cow was going on, we also had Lucy Neepy come and join us. And mm -hmm. she did uh, six, seven workshops over six days, and we had a blast with her. Mm -hmm. Our mom was good at that point. And... Um, uh, so we so we had a lot of fun with her, but it did take us away from the cow a little bit. Yeah. And then um, and then after that, mom went into the hospital, and so that took mm -hmm. us away from the cow as well. But um, we should. So we didn't we finish on time, but we're still working on we it. We are still yeah. working on it. Yeah. I, I have to tell you though, I had to take a hiatus. Did you? I she couldn't. Wanted, she wanted to give me a chance to catch up. No. Well. <laughs> no. So I did well, take. Maybe. <laughs> I did take my. Um, so I have been doing quite a bit of uh, work on this project because um, when mom was in the hospital, I hadn't started the lace portion of it yet. I was still working on the right. stockinette uh, part. And it was it was nice because I could sit in a slightly darkened room mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, mom would have a nap and rest and I would work on some rows on my, on my, card, on mm -hmm. my cardigan. So where so, are you yeah. at? Um, well, I finished the fronts and the backs, and yeah. I picked up stitches for the band. Okay. Yep. So I'm just working. I've, I've done the. Oh yeah. I've done this part, and I'm just working on the ribbing down below here. Okay. And you had said that you put in an extra row mm -hmm. of patterning. I did. So I did too. Okay. Because I didn't want her to say afterwards that you know I finished before her because. No. Um, <laughs> No, I just <laughs> felt that, you know, I wanted it to cover all my bigger parts. <laughs> so let's see yours. We'll okay. choose it. Or off we'll so, choose it. And what? while we do this, I have to say, you know, I've been working with, so we, we chose to use our own in-house yarn called Eden for this yeah. project. Barb's working with a colorway called... I'm so happy I did because this is my first sweater in Eden. Yeah. What colorway is this? The purple. Um, Here, let me help jewel. you. Jewel. Jewel and I'm using forest in the green, and so, I love knitting with this. Cynthia, I feel like my tension must be looser than yours. Could be, it could I be. Because I feel yeah. like my sweater is so much bigger. Well, I I think uh, I think tension might be part of it for sure. I know when yeah. I did my swatch, mm -hmm. I was uh, slightly under, no, slightly over twenty two stitches. So you know, I just decided I would block it. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. beautiful. Look at so that it's color. Coming along. I just have to do the sleeves, but I got stuck on the sleeves. I started the sleeves and then I needed two sets of needles, like right. a front and a back, because I don't think I had a small enough one at home. Yeah. And I was just put off by it. I know. Something happened. So people call it getting uh, what? Getting lost on Sleeve Island? Like you, <laughs> you're stranded on Sleeve Island. There's 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 some sort of like internet meme about that. Yeah. Um, so what you might want to do is put Get them the right size needle. Well, put them both on the same needle and do it two at a time. Oh. And put a progress keeper in here. Oh yeah. No matter what you do, even if you do them separately, mm -hmm. put a progress keeper in there because the thing that slows me down so much is looking and saying, "Oh man, I've made no progress." Right. Sleeves are the worst, yeah. right? Especially on a garment like this, because you have to keep turning the sleeve and you yeah. have to turn your entire sweater uh, each time. Maybe that's what I got sick of doing. Yeah. I hated yeah. turning the work. But if you put both sleeves on one circular, mm -hmm. and what I do is I usually line them up so that they're going the same direction. Right. Okay. Then you can work across this sleeve, work across this sleeve. And well, you that's pick the nice. whole thing up and turn it. Right. And then you work across the sleeve and work it. So yeah. it's not, can, doesn't, it can takes you a do little less time. Can do it on a 24-inch needle too? No, you probably no. need a 40-inch needle if you oh, want a magic okay. loop because you have to fit it. You have to have enough cord to right. be able to yeah. loop it. See, it requires math and thinking. Or, <laughs> or don't magic loop. Use two 24-inch needles. Okay. And do it on two circulars. So All one right, circular holds that. half the stitches and one circular holds the other. That might be. 
be fun too because I've been using two balls too. Yes. And so from doing socks like this, my other little trick is that you put the ball inside the sleeve. Oh. Put a little pin here to hold the ball in place. Yeah. And then you just pull from the top as you go and oh. then... Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's such a good idea. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about we'll, yours. We'll get that. We'll get that on the needles. So yours I is called um, uh, forest. Forest, right? Yeah. This is the green, and um, and I'm doing a, a trick that Lucy Neepy taught us. Oh, on the ribbing share. down here. So at the bottom of the sweater, you do two inches of ribbing, mm -hmm. um, and it's a three by two ribbing. And she says, you know, it's not as tight. It's going to be a looser one. Right. And so make Which sure I like. Yeah, and she said, make sure you do it on a smaller needle. So we've gone from a four and a half to a 3.75, right, yeah. which is two needle sizes down. Right. right? And um, so the uh, the challenge here is keeping your knits and pearls looking crisp, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm knitting the, I'm, I'm purling by taking the yarn under the needle. Yeah. And remember Lucy said this will result in an alternate mount. On the yes. stitch, yeah. So when I go to work that stitch on the other side, I have to work into the back leg. Right. Can you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It's well because you come up to it, and it feels weird. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So I'm I'm purling uh, under the needle, and my stitches are mounted the alternate way because she said they're not mounted backwards. And so you just want to knit or purl into the appropriate leg mm -hmm. to to get it back. Um, and so I think. That's going to result, and we'll, we'll show a little close-up afterwards, but I think that's going to result in a nice crisp edge mm -hmm. for my knits and pearls. Wow. So I, I'm liking Are those the, the new Addy needles? Not yet. Oh, okay. So this is my, this is my interchangeable set. Right. But um, the next thing I have to do is the neckline. So, um, oh, so you're gonna... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this new one. So mm -hmm. tell, tell everybody about these new needles. Barbara, well, these I'm are so... Cool. I'm using them for the little shawl that I'm working on, and I love them. Mm -hmm. So they're light as a feather. These are Addy Ad came up with a new square needle. Yeah, they're calling them Rocket Squared. <laughs> yeah. I think that they um, have probably had this in the works a long time. I know there was a collage that had square needles, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure what the status of those needles are now. They, were, they did get sold to a company in Canada, mm. but that company is now... I'm not making them anymore, so uh, it's kind of great timing that Addy came out with these two for anyone who likes a square needle. I mean, a customer came in and told me that she liked round needles, but sometimes they hurt her hands, and she mm -hmm. she's quite holds her needles quite tight. Right. Yeah. Where she said these ones fit her fingers a little better because of the right. flatness on them; they don't hurt so much. Yeah. And then this little ribbing too. It's like ridges in the needle. Yeah. And when we were at TNNA, uh, we were talking to people about, um, well, we went and tried out the needles at mm -hmm. Abby's booth. Um, and they were saying, you know, that helps to, um, well, they, they thought maybe that the ridges in the needle would help with um, stimulating your fingers so that, you know, your circulation was, I mean, I, I yeah. don't know the the size we had but it does feel interesting well and um, i've heard too that it really does help keep the stitches on ah so they don't mm -hmm. slide off because a metal needle round can be very slick and right. slippery especially with mohair right and yeah. this seems to hold it on really nice oh, good even better than my wood needles right so and, and these are the rocket tips as well these tips you guys they're so nice mm -hmm. and these even feel lighter than my interchangeables. Yeah, I know. I, I asked them about that too. Um, and I, and the they only answer that the Scassell folks had was that maybe it's because um, there's because they're squared, maybe they have lost a, a, you know, a, a fraction of, of weight. the weight. Uh -huh. And um, I asked the lady who was at the booth um, what they're coated with, and she said chrome. Yeah, and I think that, that there was something that I read somewhere about the... Um, materials being slightly different. The other ones were white brass, right? Or gold brass? Um, no, oh, no, the oh, I see. Inside coated, the needle. Yeah, they were coated with. Anyways, um, I think these that might make a, a difference. Mm -hmm. Chrome. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, she said that in Germany they have strict laws on metals. Yeah. And so they can't do nickel plating and so they, they use chrome. Now she was converting her she was she was looking up the words for uh, the German metals and um, we we settled on chrome. So uh, yeah. I she wasn't she she I wasn't sure that she was sure exactly what it was, but well, it sure looks shiny and it is very smooth. So yeah. It reminds me of chrome. Remember yeah. when cars used to have chrome? Oh yeah, well, <laughs> Mario has a few with that's a right. lot of chrome. <laughs> My husband collects classic cars. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, yeah, chrome bumpers. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, those are really nice. Tell us what you're working on here. Well, like I said, I couldn't get into anything that required much thinking, yeah. and so. For, um, I just picked this one up the other day because I wanted to integrate mohair with self-striping yarn. There's a lot of um, people that are now using more mohair than ever before. I mm -hmm. think it's become quite trendy. And um, I'm doing a hot shawl. Right. This, so is, this is an is... RCY pattern by yeah. uh, Holly, Le Holly Yo. Yeah. And it was originally designed in our hat trick yarn. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using uh, Millie Calori by Lang. And I'm using Lang Mohair Luxe Lame. Ooh. It's just got a little bit of glitter in it. It sure does. And it's fun. It's one of those projects you don't have to think about. You can just knit, knit, knit. I think I have a ball here. Of the, That's beautiful. So the, the Lang colorway. Mill, Mill Calori is striping. Yeah. It's and striping then. and it's such a nice merino. It's really uh, fine and soft and loosely spun. Mm -hmm. So it's... Um, and it, it has a long color transition. That's the other thing I really like about it. Right. Yeah, yeah. you can get all the way across the shawl with that color. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then this is the lame. That's beautiful. Um, very sparkly. Yes. Blingy. I love it. But yeah, but not. It doesn't feel like a metallic. Right. You know, sometimes those metallic yarns can have a, oh, no. a little one's pick really to them. Soft. That's and then gorgeous. Cynthia, the other one I'm working on is like totally mindless this is my mm -hmm. zigzag that i've had forever and yep. now i'm almost done i think i saw to... you holding this at the funeral yeah <laughs> so i applaud you for that yeah I, I, you know again that that's just a sign of how much comfort knitting brings yes when you feel like you're under under stress or you know emotional turmoil mm -hmm. yeah hey? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this Beautiful. is this, this is, is my gorgeous. tribute to my mom. What colors are these, Barb? This was these <clears> two, <throat> I think, are gone. These are this was uh, Adam and Eve, um, Shel Sedone, oh, and yes. uh, I think Mount Tabor. Right. Yeah, we don't have these anymore. They were uh, colors that we retired a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Yeah, but I just love the way they played together. Yeah, and um, had some nice purples and blues and golds. Yeah, this is gorgeous. It would go nice with your scarf. Yes. So uh, well, I'll get to that in mm -hmm. just a second. This is yeah. beautiful. And, and I love it. <clears throat> you know, it's a pattern that you can just memorize. Yeah. This you is, don't have, yeah. This is zigzag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, it's just, you know, every row is the same. Yeah. And that was a nice meditative knit. Yeah. And it and it looks it looks just as fabulous on the back side does it? it does on the front. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is the back side. And I think this the pattern the calls for it about uh, two thirds of this size. I added on um, several extra repeats because mm -hmm. I wanted it to be wider. Right. And I, I'm almost thinking I might just, um, you know, keep on going. I think I saw some of these in some of the Advent Box right. projects. Yeah. yeah. So I might just dip in and grab a few more mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. make it even longer. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could transition to another color too. I could, right? Yeah. So you could you could uh, stripe it with a different color. Yeah. Or do some solids in there if mm -hmm. you wanted to do some. And I don't know, can you tell here I did like four rows instead of two? Oh. So I, I thought, oh, this might be fun to right. do a bit of an optical illusion and yeah. have some fun at the other end. So you can tell when it's pointed out, but you, yeah. know, you can't really tell. Yeah, unless you unless you know, it's almost Missoni like, you know, it very is. bright and I love it. It's gorgeous, and you just carry the other color up the side. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking maybe the other half needs to be, kind of like this, right? Bigger sections. Sure. And 
That would be a really cool barn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of carrying the color up the side, we should, just going back to the fox track cardigan, which mm -hmm. is the four-day cowl, and we're using hand-painted yarns. Right. So one of the things that we're, you know, that I'm, I'm doing consistently, I imagine Me you too. have too, yeah. is using two balls. <clears throat> and so like Barb's um, zigzag, uh, you, you, you do two row stripes, although you can't really tell. Right. right. And the purpose behind that is because each ball of hand painted yarn can have differing amounts of dye in them mm -hmm. and will come across with a different shade and tone. And I noticed, did you notice? Cause I noticed in mine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I changed, I think I added a second ball into my mix when I started the lace patterning. Oh, okay. Because I like to kind of offset the balls. I don't want to end at the same time. I started mine right up at the top. Yeah, I did. I, I exchanged yarns. Oh, you did. But when okay. I got to here, I started a new ball in my right. two ball process and it's darker. Oh. But it's okay. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's in no, the it looks pattern purposeful. section. But you can see that the, the lace patterning is a little bit darker wow, because yeah. one of the balls is darker. It's not something. Yeah. And then it's a nice uh, transition, though, yeah. between the top. It, it's lucky that it happened right there, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And when you do the when you do the panels around here, I don't think you need to change balls like that anymore because if you do get striping, it's going up and down. Mm -hmm. So that's not so bad. But, but horizontal stripes in a sweater, I don't like. Well, it would be nice, too, if you had some of the darker <clears throat> green for your banding. Yeah. Because then it, yeah. would, it would look... Uh, Purposeful, yeah, and then you don't get so much pooling as well. So if mm -hmm. you're if you are working with a hand painted yarn, by striping with two balls, you even out the pooling in it. Mm -hmm. So that's always. And you're using part. your little threads that you got from church mouse. Yeah, this is the Chinese knot cord. I know. I wish I could us. find where we can. Where, if anybody knows where you can buy this, let me know. I think you can order it from church mouse now. Oh, I think they have you? it on their online store. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. And I'll bet, I'll bet John and Kit would tell you where they got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, it's great. So, um, so the Lovely. other thing, so the other thing related to our mom is that now that the funeral's over, um, we're going into her apartment and packing up her clothes. And so earlier this week, my brother and I were there and I was going through her drawers and I found some knitted things. Yeah, show me. And I took them home because I thought, I, yeah, you showed me this one. Yeah, so this is a shawl that I knit for mom way, way back when we had the downtown store. Yeah, probably and, <clears> 10 <throat> years ago yeah. or more. And I believe this is Elspeth Lavold, yeah. Silky Wool. And I really think the pattern, Cynthia, is Lacey from... Um, Louette. Lacey, yeah, Lacey, Stacy, Macy or something. It or, could be, I don't remember but it's a pretty it's lovely pattern so i i brought it to yesterday i had to work and so i brought it to the store and i soaked it in the sink and then i took it upstairs and i blocked it with my blocking wires mm -hmm. and some blocking mats and so um it's good to go and barb thinks yeah. it will look nice with my black outfit so yes very nice just want some help i'm just gonna do yeah i always like black and gold together <laughs> Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, pops. Yeah. What else did you find? So, uh, I also... Oh, remind me to tell you about these two. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, this is a pair of socks. Aww. It was in her drawer. And I think this is yarn that I dyed. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, there... Because it's a heavier sock. It's yeah. Sport weight. So, kind of like a bed sock, right? Mm. They, and Cynthia, they look brand new. Well, she, she probably didn't wear them. I mean, Aww. but it's... You know, because his, um, well, she had some difficulty getting things on her feet. Well, right. So she had, um, but anyway, I just, I was touched that she kept them. Yeah. And they were rolled up in her drawer. And so Aww. maybe she wore them like bed socks. Yeah. You know? um, and then these gloves, I gave these to her just this last Christmas. She was in the hospital and she was getting released right after her birthday. So I gave her these gloves. And again, these were a pair of gloves I made quite a long time ago. And I think it might be. Rowan, a Rowan yarn, or maybe um, that um, American one that we used to have for the kits. You know, the we used to have this domino. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Vivian Hawksborough. Right. And didn't, Hawksborough. didn't she use like yeah. um, uh, Harrisville tweed? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I think, and these were you know Boy, one ball of each. Boy, do I ever have a good memory? You sure do. Long term's good. Short yeah. term. And so I washed these and I blocked them using these. Oh my god! Glove blockers. So, yeah, where did where these come from? <clears throat> okay, so um, well, let's go through the. I got a few more things. Okay, and then I'll tell you about All that. Right. So uh, this I also gave to this her this year. This was in her <clears throat> stuff too. Yeah. So oh this my was gosh. this is a Peaks and Ridges cowl from the Advent box mm -hmm. and in Noah's uh, Ark. Mm -hmm. The colorway. I think so. Yeah. And uh, and so I gave that to her again. It was either for her birthday or for Christmas this Aww. year. So I don't think she had a chance to wear it, but it was in her drawer. And then there was this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you remember okay. this? Yes. You put that on. Yeah, this is um, I think this a blast is... out of the past. <laughs> Baby uh, monkey, maybe? Yeah, fun <laughs> fur from 2006 or seven. Or, or maybe even earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so I washed it, and then uh, when I when I took it off Cozy. my drying rack, it was it looked a little matted, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went over it with my gleaner, just the lint brush side oh, of the yeah. gleaner, just to pull up the nap on it. I think even if you you know just kind of like whip Throw it around, it it, yeah. Okay. Here's one more. Are you ready this, for this? This is so synthetic. <laughs> Don't hold a match near this. Oh, yes. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, but it feels we've pretty come fun. a long way, baby. <laughs> she loved that though. Uh, yeah, and she loved. Love this too. Are you ready? A lot of people yeah, in their nineties <laughs> do. Okay, what? Oh yes, <laughs> ruffles. Here, oh, so you guys, I'm not kidding you. This is all coming back. So a lot of the suppliers now have fur yarns. They're they're hot again. So you put that one on. Yeah, and I'll put this one on. Oh my God, <clears throat> I'm gonna do it the Italian way. Just fold it in half and pull it through. Yeah, I still see people wearing these. So this was uh, this was kind of like a lace yarn, and you knit the you knit the edge of it. Yeah. But uh, she had two of these in her Oh trick. my gosh! <laughs> so, well, this know. is truly a tribute to our mom because we wouldn't be caught dead in these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might have to take that out. It's all right. It's all right. She would she would understand. She would laugh. Yeah. Oh man, I have to take it off because it's warm in here, yeah. and uh, and, and the just, synthetic it's doesn't. It's a fashion absorb. faux pas. <laughs> oh, that's right. that's nice. Okay, so, so this was this helped because you know packing up somebody's clothes is a sad thing, but when I saw these, I had a good laugh, and I just thanked her for hanging on to all the stuff that we made for yeah. her. Yeah, how sweet, eh? Yeah. yeah. All right, so let me show you what I used for blocking. Yeah. Um, remember Saji, our I friend do. from Wool Love? Yes. He sent us the newest, their They're newest on, product. Yeah, wrap, yeah. For you at the top. Um, so this is a set of nine blocking mats. And um, they're available in Canada. So he said, now I have them here in Canada. You can show them off on your podcast if you want. So the nice thing with this, and I've got some pictures that I'll, I'll share. The nice thing about this is that of the nine mats, four of them are have lines on them to make circles. So if you're blocking a circle or even a shawl, like a half circle, you've got some, um, you've got some lines that you can pin on. Um, and that will help you with your... And he's got your, numbers, Cynthia, so what's yeah. that about? So um, if you want the... So there's a grid on here, a one-inch grid. Um, and so if you want the grid lines to line up perfectly, you lay your mats out in the sequence that they're okay. in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so and four would go on top of one. Four would go on top of one. And then the, the vertical and horizontal lines will match up. Cool. But if you don't need them, so yesterday when I was blocking my shawl, I didn't need that. So I just laid them out in a random order. Well, it looks and like the circle lines up too. If you yes. Do that. Yeah. So one, two, three, um, sorry, one, two, four, and five make the circle. Um, and they're, they may be in a different, the numbers may be in a different color. It comes with blocking pins. Two sets of them too. That's yeah. a lot. And these glove blockers. Oh they're all in the package. Those are handy. They're really cool. I mean, they're, they're not, They're um, silicone, right? Or something like that. They're silicone or plastic and they, um, and they're only one size. Right. So I don't know if he plans on making more or, but your gloves dry really quickly and it's mm -hmm. nice to have the fingers um, in there. So I just slipped my hand in there, my, my gloves in there. Yeah. And, uh, and it comes with this little case too. Yep. The whole case. 
and with then the there's handle. with the handle and there's a little coupon in the bottom. So we'll um, we're not a able a uh, coupon for another gift. I think if you order again, oh. um, they'll give you something else. But it, it's it's lightweight. Um, he's selling it through Amazon, so it's really easy to get. We, we can't get them here in no. our store. Like we don't can't they don't buy do, them. They don't do wholesale and. Um, we don't normally do this either, which is mm. review other people's products, but I really like this. And blocking yeah, mats no. are for us is something that's really hard to ship to you. You know, like it, it's so if you can order it from someone who's doing nothing but shipping them out, then mm -hmm. it's a good deal for you. And it's a good deal for us too, right. in that sense. Yeah. And they're called wool love. Wool love. I'll put a link to it in the show yeah. notes so you can find them. You and know, I, I found out this week too, that our favorite blocking wires, mm -hmm aren't being made anymore. Oh, no. The yeah. Lazadas ones? Uh -oh. We just found a Canadian distributor to distribute them. Yeah. And now the owner of the company says she's not going to make them anymore. So uh, I'm not sure why? whether she'll sell or I don't know. Right, right. So these are really cool blocking wires. They're, they're very flexible. Mm -hmm. They roll up in a nice coil. And so if you were traveling or if you just have storage issues, like one of the reasons why I like these blocking mats as opposed to you know, the, the really giant ones. Yeah. So they're so easy to store. Right. It comes in its own little bag. So you can pop this in your closet. Yes. And um, just looks like your sheets. <laughs> if yeah. You, if you have some issues, about, you know, hiding stuff from other people in your family, then this just looks like the sheets for your bed. Well, mm -hmm. I think the Lazada blocking wires would fit inside it here would. too. would, yes. So if any, if any of you guys are looking for a nice set of blocking wires, mm -hmm. we still have a pretty good supply. I bought quite a few of them. Yeah, they're great. So if you want to set... Check it out and get one before they're completely gone. So we'll put a link to that on our sure. uh, on yeah. our on our show notes and a link back to the store. I have to tell you too, Cynthia. I love those little ones that are the little um, white um, squares that that have the little pins in the bottom. They look like a comb. Oh, the and blocking wires. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Knitter's Pride, I think. Yeah, they carry those too. Yeah, they come in the case. It looks like a deck of cards. I and you like open it those. Up and there's little, like those little combs. Yeah. yeah, we have those on the website too. So we'll put a link in for that. Also. I just bought a second set of those. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, because they're um, handy. Hey, I saw pictures from Holly. Yeah, and I'm sure she has two sets too. Oh, she had yeah. like 25 of them doing this really mm -hmm. long shawl. Secret, secret shawl. So a new design that might be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. that's great. Good. Yeah. So um, before we go on to the next thing, mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to um, give a shout out to Beverly. Uh, Beverly asked us about our favorite colors of hat trick. Mm. And she requested that we show them on the podcast. Okay. So I have here all the socks okay um that we that we know does she want to know our favorite colors mm -hmm. or does she want to know top sellers no she wants to know our favorite colors because okay. she's going to make a pair for her a, a friend who is 21 years old yeah and she just wants you know to know what colors we like the best is that edmonton well you know we're hockey town right yeah we love edmonton oilers whether the team, you know, is crappy or good, it doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Once you're a fan, you're a fan. Yeah. And um, these, this blue and orange and white is the Euler colors. Yep. And that's and that and I'd say touchdown is in another Edmonton. in well, Edmonton. Yeah. That weird football. We're one. talking hat trick today. Okay. So I told Beverly Edmonton as well. Yeah. And then I also said that I really like San Jose. Yes. And I like it for the colors. So yeah. I like that teal color in there. So regardless of what, uh, you know, sports team, this yarn is one of our favorites just because it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for Colorado. Is that Colorado? Buffalo. Buffalo. That is Where's... a really pretty one too, though. I want to show, wow. show Colorado. Maybe it's here. Yeah, Montreal Buffalo is really pretty. Canadians is another one that's very. Well, here's Montreal. Um, you should yeah. have that one. This is popular with a lot of Canadians. I think Montreal is probably one of the oldest hockey teams in the league. You could you, and you could be right. It's very popular as well from a sports theme. This one though, LA. This is popular just because it's black and white. I mean, who doesn't like classic black and white? Mm -hmm. And this makes so many beautiful projects. From scarves and shawls we have this one in our hot shawl and we've done it with red and it looks amazing 
Okay, so I'm not finding Colorado, but I got distracted by Columbus. <laughs> Look at that. That's just gorgeous. And I should, a disclaimer here too, that all these socks are done on 60 stitches. So if you use less or more stitches, you're going to get a different, ah, there thank you, you. Thank you. Thank I'm going to get a different combination. Yeah. I, I like this one, A, for the colors, but B, because this is where Anne Bud is from. Uh, and um, she's, she's just a lovely person. And so mm -hmm. who can't, you know, if you're going to be sentimental about a yarn colorway, mm -hmm. that's just as good a reason as any. That's right. So but really, they are all gorgeous. Mm -hmm. We're so lucky to have Caroline, and I say this over and over again, mm -hmm. dye these yarns for us. Um, that's cool. Isn't that, isn't this cool? Yeah. This one is, which one again? Long Island. Long Island, mm -hmm. yeah. But I love the big bands of white in there. Yeah. I think yeah, this then, one might um, die up like Touchdown does too, because I feel that it's got so much white in it. It could probably it's probably maybe, half skin. Maybe, but look at the heel and the toe. Yeah. So if you were if you're working on a smaller sock, like a baby sock, you're going to get a much different striping. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't say striping, but a much different variegated pattern in there. Yeah. The other thing I just want to point out is that these yarns here, like this colorway, this is. Uh, Columbus, mm -hmm. and this one is Minnesota. Yeah, and then I'll find Winnipeg while you're okay. doing that. Yeah. These have, in the skein, when you look at the skein, it's got one tiny little blob of red in it. And it um, gives you these little dots. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? It's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Carolyn is just very creative. Yeah. All right. So, so, so Beverly, that. those are those are some of our favorites, mm -hmm. and um, we're we're going to send all our socks out for photography. So look um, on our website maybe in a couple of months, and we'll have some um, individual shots of the socks mm -hmm. that you can look at. And again, uh, remember that whatever you do with this, you're going to get something unique and original in mm -hmm. terms of the patterning on the socks. Well, which is and I think it would fun. be fun, Cynthia, if we put the shot that you have of. The three different sizes of socks in Montreal, yeah, up, up on the website yeah, too, yeah. because yeah, it's just uh, so cool how when you have different sizing and when you use different stitch counts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and different sizes of needles, you get different results. Yeah, yep. Okay, okay. Let's put these away. I'll, right. I'll do that. And so while we're talking about yarns, just for a second, mm -hmm. maybe uh, tell us about flash mob. This. Oh, one. okay, sure. So you guys, we've been doing this fun zodiac theme. And um, every month we've picked different dyers, and this month it's Virgo. Virgo is being dyed by Handmaiden Fleece Artist, and they're an uh, independent dye company from Nova Scotia. And they have chosen two bases. So they, they've created what they call the Virgo Bundle, and this is it here. Um, it's got two skeins inside it. One is Fliss, which is their uh, silk linen blend. And mm -hmm. we've carried this in the store before. I've made a number of, of scarves out of it's it. Lovely. It's lovely. It's beautiful. It's got so much silk in it, 65% and 35% linen. And so she's dyed it in rose gold. It's just the most beautiful color. Um, it's got pinks in it and golds and... Um, a little bit of a sort of a gray undertone and a brown undertone. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. And then the other yarn that's in here is Angel Hair. And this is her Kid Mohair Nylon Blend. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. the shades that are in here. They really outdid themselves this time. There's silk in here too. Mm, nope. No. Angel, you're thinking of... Um, oh. Zambezi or yeah, I just um, see the shine in here. I know, I know. You think that so right? So what's 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 it's, that? it's kid mohair and nylon seventy oh, thirty. Okay, yeah. So it's really going to um, create a lot of halo mm -hmm. and a lot of softness. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we asked them this time to provide a pattern. And so Ruth Gallo has designed a pattern. She um, works with fleece artist handmaiden mm -hmm. and she designed a pattern for us called accidental beach and i don't know if she's named that after our accidental beach oh the one in edmonton the one in edmonton <laughs> okay or if the name has got another meaning for her i'm gonna have to ask yeah. her but what she's done is um a wrap 
that's done in both yarns. So you knit with Fliss for a little bit, and then you knit with this. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's um, a really pretty feather and fan wrap. Oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah. She does beautiful work. Yeah. Ruth. Mm -hmm. So you can use it with one bundle, or you can buy two. And we did our sample with two bundles. Mm -hmm. We were really lucky. We had um, her send out a couple early on. Nice. And yeah. so Pat's been working on that, yeah. getting that knit up for us. And I think I have a, a picture I can a bit share. in progress? Yes, yeah, work in progress. It's okay. taking a little while to do because, yeah. you know, it's finer yarn. Right. And it's um, this summer. It's still hot here. Mm -hmm. So sometimes knitting it has to be done in an air-conditioned yeah. place, right? But every little bundle mm -hmm. that you get are going to come with our little signature stitch markers. Mm -hmm. This has got the Virgo symbol on it. And these are made by uh, Brick Bubble, mm -hmm. a local... Uh, artist here in um, Alberta who makes beautiful laser engraved items. Yeah, I love these. And then you can add them to your um, your bracelet, which is yeah. also made by a local That's right. uh, jeweler. These are made by Carrie. Yeah. She has a company called A New Rain, mm -hmm. and she made these fun little bracelets for us. They, they open, you can actually open them right up, and they slide off really easy, mm -hmm. and then you can put them back on. And they come with uh, another charm, a Virgo charm, mm -hmm. a knitting charm, mm -hmm. and a cute little tassel. Yeah, so if you, ways of if you want to, you can, if you want to collect your charms, you can add them on here. Right. Or you can take these ones off and use them as progress keepers. That's right. Yeah. You're never without a progress keeper, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Especially when you need one. Yep. Yeah. And I love wearing, you know, several of them together. They I've got... A few of them in it. Yeah. I mix and match them I around. love the sound they make. I know. Like, it's just, especially if you've got two of them on here, put mine on. It they just sounds like jingle. little bells. And um, the thing I was going to say, too, um, I have some of these by another company. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they're so much fun to wear them in a whole club. Right? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you hear that? <laughs> I'm sure you'll hear it all through the podcast. Yeah. And then yep. when you're when you're not using these or if you want to store your charms, um Brick Bubbles also mm -hmm. made us uh, um a gauge. a gauge tool. Yeah. Yeah. We have talked about this before, but let's talk about it again cuz it's really cool. So you've got all the all the mm -hmm. holes for all the zodiac symbols. That's right. And then you've got all your um Millimeter measuring. Mm -hmm. So you can tools. use it to put your needle through mm -hmm. to see what size it is. Yeah. And um, the um, it's made out of real wood and laser engraved. So she does such a nice job in mm -hmm. um, in you know making and laser engraving. And it's got our logo on it. Mm -hmm. Just a fun kind of um, inexpensive souvenir of zodiac. Well, you can collect. Yeah. A lot of people are collecting them all. Mm -hmm. And sustainable too, because yeah. it's made out of wood. Yeah, yeah. And Isn't then you've got the little peek through window here, so right. you can measure your stitches over two inches. Yeah, yeah. If you do that, that's perfect. So well, these are really great. put a lot of thought into them. I feel. You, so you know, I, I think it's worth mentioning again, Barb, that this whole program, Flash Mob, is a mm -hmm. way that we can bring some indie dyed yarns into the shop. Right. And the, when when these skeins are gone, they're gone. That's right. Um, we don't have a whole lot of shelf. I mean, we have lots of shelf space. We have a really big store, but it, it is full. And so we tried to figure out a way to bring in the products from independent dyers without having to store them all year long, right? Right. So this is a nice way for us to feature uh, new dyers and people that are making things, beautiful things, mm -hmm. um, and in a way that... Um, they can come in and go out. Right. The, and we're working on a, a theme for next year, too, that's going to be really yes. exciting. Yes. And um, we're going to even have more dyers in that one. Mm -hmm. More variety of dyers? More variety, yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, too, you know, fleece artist, or sorry, handmaiden is maybe not what you would consider, you know, a kitchen dyer. They, right. they have a company and they they, uh, they do a lot of dyeing. But I think what what's really nice about this is that we have a relationship with them right. that's special. And they're doing um, they're doing these combos based on you know their expertise and the thoughtfulness that they have about the theme that we're that's doing. Right. Yeah. And they're limited edition. So again, you know, you can't get this anywhere else. No. It's just 
something special that Jana and the dyers at Handmaiden have done for us. Right. And then, you know, the, the design to go along with it is really special and unique. And we like to have a blend of companies who do this full time, mm -hmm. you know, wholesale, that this is their business, as well as kitchen dyers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's, um, you know, sometimes things happen and people commit to, to getting you yarn, but they can't do it for whatever right. reason. So it's our plan B. We can always go to one of our, <laughs> our bigger dyers and they can help out if sure. things like that happen. So, yeah. Um, well, I think the other nice thing that you're doing with this, Barb, is that when you are working with those small indie dyers, you're ordering enough skeins of yarn to make it worth their while. Right. And um, so they, they can do a big batch and send it off and they don't have to deal with the onesies and twosies on mm -hmm. their own Etsy pages and things like that. So I think yeah. that's that's really nice. And we try and then position it in a time in their schedule too mm -hmm. when they've got a little downtime. Not so busy. Yeah. And so it, yeah. I think it works out. They seem to love it. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Loves. I think the feedback's been really good. Yeah. And then, you know, everybody who buys it knows that they're supporting local people and, um, or, or, you know, small independent businesses. Including yeah. ours. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Right. Yes. We can't forget Thank ourselves. Thank you, everybody yeah. who's buying this too, because it's been very popular and it's a fun. It's it's lots of work, but it's a fun way for us to bring brand new things mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, it is really fun. Mm -hmm. Good job in bundling that up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So, so um, that's Virgo. One, and that'll be out August twentieth. Twentieth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Six p.m. Yeah. Online store. So. Maybe just on that last theme of limited edition things, mm -hmm. we should also talk about the Advent Box oh, okay. and Arna and Carlos. Sure. Um, so I have a I have another little project here in my bag. We're working I, on 2019 Advent Box right now. Right. Yeah. That I can't reveal because it's full of secret things that Barb and I have been working on. But um, it's going to be you know something that you'll find in the Advent Box because our Advent Box always has this combination of little notions that you might like, mm -hmm. little treats that you might enjoy, um, and little projects. Right. Or maybe, and you know, big projects. Maybe big this projects. Year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at uh, something that we hope will be very exciting for you for 2019 as a project, and something that you can work on over mm -hmm. Christmas, and hopefully... Be finished and enjoy yes, for Christmas. Yes. And then we also have another little project that we've been working on with someone very special. Because mm -hmm. it's always nice to have, you know, friends, mm -hmm. designer friends, you know, kind of pitch into the Advent Box yep. projects as well. And so. Bud. <laughs> hey, oh, spoiler sorry. alert. <laughs> so if you want to get in on the Advent Box, we're taking pre-orders. Right, yeah. And the pre-orders are done on... August 15th. That's right. This podcast, so it should give you about a week from the time yeah. that this airs. We're just going to kind of, pick, we just picked a date and we're going to stop kind of then. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll make a few more, but we had to get notice into our suppliers in mm -hmm. order to bring everything together. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like one, um, please sign up now mm -hmm. and we'll make sure that we get it to you. Yeah. And um, then we're off to think about bigger and better things, right? Right. Well, they're planning for next year. Yeah. 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 So um, the Advent Box pre-order date is, um, the deadline is August the 15th. Right. Um, if, um, and then we start sending them out um, the end of October. Yeah. The dates are on our online store. Yeah. 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 We'll put a link in there. But the elves are going to be very busy between mm -hmm. the end of August and October 1, putting mm -hmm. boxes together mm -hmm. and... And we're going to be getting them shipped out. Yeah. And um, then just shortly after that, we have our, our special guests arriving. Right. So we're, we're so honored to be welcoming Arna and Carlos yes. to Edmonton. Celebrities coming to Edmonton. <laughs> I'm vibrating yeah. because I have all of their books except for one. And the last time I went to Sydney, I had to go to Seattle and I could only pack one book to take for signing so this time I can bring in all seven yeah <laughs> yeah and have we're so excited I'm teaching a class before they come um to give people a little bit of 
hands on on color work so they can get a little experience before exactly. getting into Arnie's class. But I think most, a few of them are completely sold out. Yeah, right. So we only we're only able to offer four classes, right? And then we can do an evening lecture. So mm -hmm. there's lots of there's lots of room in the evening lecture because we can. We can make that room really big. Mm -hmm. um, but the classes, of course, are limited to 25 mm -hmm. people per class. So um, so the first two classes on Tuesday, uh, November the 5th, are sold out. And that was the introduction to um, Norwegian color work right. and the knitting and purling the Norwegian well, way. You know, I'm more excited about taking the bird class. Yeah, there's some... There's some space left in the Knitted Birds class. I already signed up. <laughs> and I signed up for the Christmas balls. Yes. Because I love Christmas-related things. Yes. And, that's and I, I did have a couple of people contact me with some concerns about those classes. Like they felt like they wouldn't be um, ready to take them because they don't know how to do color work. So oh. I've been s sending them notes back to say, don't worry about that. Sign up. Uh, because we'll we'll prepare you. We'll help you get prepared. Well, and I read that they cover off that Norwegian style of knitting in all the classes that they do. Yeah, I well, in the class that I went to Seattle with Jennifer, my daughter, and we took their class on knitted dolls. And Arna was more than happy to show us how mm -hmm. to do the Norwegian so pearl. Don't worry that you're going to miss out. Each one of the classes has that technique, and they have a project that you're going to be making too. Yeah. So, but if you if you feel um, if you feel a little bit concerned about your technical abilities, let us know because yeah. we have lots of classes like the one that Barb's going to teach, where we'll we'll show you how to do um, how to manage two mm -hmm. colors or how to deal with short rows or whatever it is that you think you might might be a stumbling block for you. Yeah, because we know you want to get the most out of the experience. So and then you want to have your picture taken with Arnie and Carlos too, because <laughs> we we had to stand in front of their poster. At, at TNNA, TNNA. <laughs> and get our picture taken with them, funny. so it'd be yeah. fun. Yeah. It'd be neat, too, if we could maybe convince them to do a podcast with us. I think they might. You think I so? I think so, yeah. Oh, that would be very cool. You might have so to brush up tuned. your uh, Norwegian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to learn a swear word or something. <laughs> you always were the... The, the bad person, the, yeah. the black sheep in the family. Yeah. <laughs> well, you learned how their favorite drink. Yes. I don't know how to pronounce it, but the uh, the national drink in um, the the national liquor of Norway is uh, aquavit, and then uh, you can make a mulled wine with aquavit in it called grog. grog. It but sounds it's, really good. I'd it's like the to try with it. The slash through it, so I'm pretty sure I'm not saying it correctly. We'll have to find a bottle and just make some. Yeah, yeah. We could serve it here at the store, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, we're going to um, we're going Close to keep this off. one short today. Yeah. And um, thank you for being with us. And thank you again for all the support and comfort that everyone's been giving to us at this mm -hmm. time and we want to extend that back to you we know that we're not alone mm -hmm. in losing a parent um and in going through the you know this is a natural process and we all go through it so if you'd like to share with us um any of your stories memories inspirations uh things like that we'd really love to hear that that would be It'd be really nice. People can go to our blog post and post things, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Or you post a comment on the podcast. Do both. Um, mm -hmm. We'd we'd be happy to read that and connect with you on these, you know, natural events in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here's to mom, Cynthia. Here's to mom. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> See you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>